Hello, CPAC. It's great to talk to real Americans. American businesses are more loyal to a communist state than to the United States. So, Jim Carafano, Heritage Foundation. What the devil is going on? Right. Well, first of all, he, did, he doesn't know I'm going to do this, but we got to talk about for, we got to talk about this guy. So <laughs> remember, ten, just ten years ago, we, in Washington there was this war. We had panda huggers and panda haters, right? So the panda huggers were, "Don't worry about China. They'll be fine. They'll grow up. They'll marry your daughter." And the panda haters were like, "No, no, you don't understand. These guys are run by communists. They're going to eat your lunch." Well, that debate is over today, and the only people that the panda huggers are hugging are the panda haters. But this guy, this guy was the voice that was telling us 10 years ago, let's, yes. Come on. Come on. All right, so I, I gotta tell you just a really quick story. So to answer your question, so during the first Gulf War, the army ran out of these big truck tires, right? And so the company that made them, they put out this national recall for all the truck tires. So there's this good old boy in the Midwest, right? And he's got like 19 tires. So he calls up his buddy and he gets his Mack truck, he puts all the tires on the truck and he drives the truck halfway across the country to Dover and he pulls up to the airfield and he goes up to the guy and goes, here are the tires. And the guy goes, like, he said, our guys need these tires. And those tires were on trucks the next day in the desert. That, is what we want from our American businessmen. That spirit, right? Could you imagine Jack Dorsey doing that? Like he'd be tripping over his beard and like say, I'm not touching a petroleum product. So to answer your question really quickly is we need American leaders to, on two critical areas. I know we're gonna talk a lot about this, military and economic strategy. You know, militarily today, a lot of the capabilities that we need to, to build our military and to protect our infrastructure, they're actually made in the private sector. And in the economic space, we need leaders that are going to grow the economy, grow jobs, innovate, do prosperity. And that needs to be matched with an administration that actually has not just a military strategy, but a real economic strategy for doing China. And the one thing I think I just want to make sure we walk away from here today is that we play a role here as well, right? We as consumers, we as stockholders, and we as voters, we have to tell our American leaders, whether they're in Washington or they're in a corporate broadroom, that we expect them to stand up for America. Yes. <laughs> Congressman, um, Jim Lemon, who's a sponsor of CPAC, uh, Depcon Power, he makes solar power farms. And yesterday he told me that he scours the earth to buy products that are not made from China. You're in Congress. What can you do to help him? Or maybe I should say, what should, should we do anything to help him? Well, sure. The first thing that we should do as leaders, as elected officials, as, as people that are blazing the trail and showing the way, is to do no harm. Is to, so, so number one, in, you look at the Biden administration, look at the top of the Biden administration from the Secretary of State. My goodness, look at the president and his son. All right. The first thing is to not be out supporting the communists that are harvesting organs, that are in, uh, putting people in concentration camps, and that are destroying America and the free world. That, that's number one. That, that's easy, right? Not hard to figure that out. You know, while you're talking about that, you've sponsored a bill in Congress to designate the Communist Party as a transnational criminal organization. Now, I hope you get that through, and if you do, the question is going to be, how can American business, how can American universities, how can any American deal with communist China when it is a transnational criminal organization? Well, that, first of all, is to acknowledge what the situation is. I mean, what we have to do is make a distinction between the people of China that are, that are yearning to breathe free, just like everywhere, everybody else on the planet, and the Communist Chinese Party, which is a thugocracy. It is a government of thugs. It is a criminal enterprise. And we have, why would we deal with any other criminal enterprise in the United States or elsewhere? We wouldn't do that here. Why, why do we accept it there? Those two billion people, that market. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it's all going to go away. 
right? The American businessmen, the Chamber of Commerce, they all think that they're going to get a portion of that market, and China pulls them in, and they make the investment, and then they're caught. Then they got the hook in, and then when they try and pull back out, or they try and get the return on the investment, the Chinese government, right? Because all these businesses are, are, are state-sponsored entities. They make sure that the technology doesn't leave, and then the market doesn't leave, and then look at General Electric as a prime example. I mean, they invested billions and billions of dollars. Where are they now? They're, you know, China has subsumed this organization and this product line. We have to, we have to, they have to see it, and government needs to help. Government needs to help because uh, the playing field's not level, but the playing field needs to be level, and businesses are only going to go where they see the rest of government forcing them to go. And, and there's, a, there's a feeling that China's on the rise and that the United States is headed the other direction. Barack Obama helped with that. Barack Obama helped with that. President Trump came in and said, no, we don't, it doesn't have to be this way. These are policy choices that we're making, and we no longer have to make them. Government has to lead the way and say, we're not going to allow two standards, one for American companies and investments and another one for Chinese companies that don't have to follow the rules. That's a minimum standard that has to happen. Yeah. Josh Phillips, Epic Times. I heard Jim Carafano talk about consumer choices. Um, I asked Twitter, what do they want to hear from this panel? And Cowboy Tom 57 and thank you very much. He said, the impact of consumer decisions on corporate decisions on locating manufacturing is critical. In other words, we've got buying power, as Jim said. Please talk about that. So let's talk first about how the Chinese Communist Party views this. If we were to talk about the most basic concept of communism, and this is the Chinese Communist Party, what is it? Seize the means of production. Who controls the world's factories? Who controls the world's natural resources? Who is taking over countries through critical infrastructure? Who is subverting their political structures? Who is working to take over the grassroots of these countries through things that the United Front Work Department? If the Chinese Communist Party does not already control it, they are trying to control it. And when businesses want to work with China, they have two choices. Either they're going to face Chinese state-run companies that they cannot compete with because they get state money and they could bid under costs, or they sell their values out to the Chinese Communist Party and work with them. And unless this is stopped, unless politics comes in and says you cannot work with Chinese companies that have any ties to Chinese government finance or to the Chinese military, which is almost all of them, then you can't work with us. Because there's no possible way that you can have a communist country using these types of policies with these types of publicly stated agendas, working with free countries and have them not take over. So, you know, as the congressman said, the Communist Party is a transnational criminal organization. It's the mafia, but much worse. So really what we're saying is that all of us really can not buy Chinese products. We can go to a Walmart and say, look, we're not taking this crap, right? That's absolutely true, absolutely so, true. So Gordon, I know you're supposed to be the moderator, but we can maybe ask you questions, right? Yeah, of so, course. No, so weren't there policies that were operationalizing under Trump that were driving economic strategy in the right direction, things that this administration ought to be building on as opposed to walking away from it. Is that fair? Absolutely. I mean, President Trump started with Buy American. And you know, Biden just a couple days ago issued an executive order really following in Trump's footsteps. But really more important, he started to look at these supply chains and figured out we need to make stuff here because the Chinese are actually um, using their positions in supply chains to achieve geopolitical goals. In other words, to attack us. Congressman, I know I you talked it's about it's this. It's more than just rhetoric. So we just passed a bill in Congress to gobble up more United States land and, and exclude it from development. And when I say development, it includes rare earth minerals, mining. And they call them rare earth minerals, the things that make solar panels and electronics. Folks, they're not rare. They're everywhere. We just don't get them in the United States of America because China uses organizations like the National Resources Defense Council. They use American organizations. They fund them who then propagandize to you and propagandize to your legislators who then pass that kind of legislation which doesn't allow America or American companies to get the things that we need. We're literally outsourcing the production of the rope that we're going to buy from the executioners that are going to hang us. And the executioners plan to be China. Yes, and another person out of the Twitterverse, 
USA Jennifer A at Wisdom 4Y asks, how do we decouple from China? Congressman? It has to start a little bit at a time. You know, we do buy things from China. I mean, I, I will tell you, I've gone to Walmart. My, my nine-year-old daughter turns things over to see where, where they come from. There's nothing that stops me from picking up the phone or talking to the information desk at a store and say, you know what? I don't want you to buy stuff from China. I'm willing to pay more. I will tell you, there are certain online sellers. Some begin with A. I'll look at the products on there, but if I can find somebody else within there that sells the same thing, it might be 2 or $3 more, I'm paying for it. I'm going to go ahead and do that because you've got to stand up. So it takes us saying, we don't want to buy this cheap garbage that imperils our country. So Josh, continuing along these lines, we got a woman named Mahala Bala Bandre. She wants to talk about the destruction of American industry and goods in China made by slave labor. So let's be clear about something. There's a difference between the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese people. The Chinese Communist Party is the greatest abuser of the Chinese people in history. Just under Mao Zedong, 50 million people to 70 million people killed, depending on which estimates you go by. During the Cultural Revolution, destroyed their historical relics, temples, religion, you name it. They destroyed what they called the four olds, old religion, old belief, old culture. Everything the Chinese people were, the Chinese Communist Party has tried to destroy. And when it says that it uplifted the Chinese people, it put restrictions on the Chinese people. And when it took off those restrictions and they were able to succeed like some of the rest of the world to an extent, they took credit for it. That's like holding someone's head underwater and lifting them up and telling them you saved them from drowning. That is what the Chinese Communist Party has done to the Chinese people. We are almost out of time. Jim, right. Yeah, just a thought. So the, I, I don't want people to leave here thinking that the threat is just your businesses and your bucks. Last year, I stood here and I said, hey, dude, get off of TikTok, right? How many people got off of TikTok? Can I, anybody? I wasn't on it. I was well, never on it. Get on. They, it's not just, they, China, part of the Chinese strategy is to, be, is to dominate world information. And there's a reason why they have selected artificial intelligence and quantum computing as the lead technology advances because their idea is we are going to suck up all this information and then we're going to have to figure out how to exploit it and run everything. And that's why things like TikTok, you might not think of that as an economic challenge, but TikTok is a super highway taking American information and porting it right back to China. That was why President Trump was so tough on 5G. 5G was a super highway that was going to take everything you know and give it to Beijing and Beijing was going to figure out sooner or later how to turn that against you. So we have, to, we have to focus on that challenge as well. And that Kudlow talked about it. We are out of time, but I've got one minute for each of the panelists on what is the most important thing we, knew, we need to do to protect ourselves from communist China. Congressman, you're first. One minute. The first thing is, is that the government at the highest level needs to, needs to explain to the American people and acknowledge what the threat is. China is not a strategic competitor. They are an enemy of the United States of America. That has to come from uh, the top. That, that has to be number one. Number two, we need reciprocity and, 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 a, and, and the same standards for China as we do for America. So you got one Apple factory that makes the phone, 230,000 employees in one factory. Now, the reason that doesn't happen in the United States is because we have standards. We're going to abide by our standards, but we ought to say to Apple, if we're paying $1,000 for a phone and you're making the difference, from slave labor to the cost of that phone, you must make sure that you treat those workers in China the same way, or we're no longer going to let you sell these phones in the United States of America. And that's how it has to be, Gordon. Well, before we leave, I'm just going to say, we've got a number of questions from Twitter about Chinese buying farmland. We don't have time to talk today, about it today, but we've got to start thinking about it. Josh, one minute. We need to recognize the Chinese Communist Party for what it is, which is an abusive, genocidal regime that has in its publicly stated goals what they call unrestricted warfare, tactics designed to undermine every single country, whittle them away from inside, and take them down. And every single, every single member of government, every single business leader, every single media organization, every single think tank, that as people have been subverted by the Chinese Communist Party's United Front Work Department or its related organizations, needs to be held accountable, pointed out, and everything they do supporting these ties to the CCP needs to be exposed. You're going to be the, 
You're going to be the number one witness when the congressman holds his hearing on his bill about designating them a transnational criminal organization. Jim Carafano, I know this is going to be tough, but you've got to keep it to one I don't minute. Need, I, don't, I don't need a minute. I need 76 million Americans because about your responsibilities as consumers, as stakeholders, as voters, to every day ask what are our leaders doing, whether they're in a boardroom or they're in the US Capitol, what are you doing to deal with really the greatest threat to America's freedom, its peace, and its security in our generation? Yes. Thank you all, guys. You were really fantastic. God bless you. God bless America. Say that again. God bless America.